good afternoon. Um, welcome back to the MED 2020 Mediterranean Dialogues. Um, I'm Viviana Mazza, I'm a journalist at Corriere della Sera newspaper in Milan. Um, with me uh, is Ugo Tramballi, a senior advisor in ISPI. Um, and we have the pleasure today um, to talk with uh, Sharbel Wehbi. Uh, he's a Lebanese politician and he's the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Um, we, um, we want to welcome you, uh, Minister Wehbi. Thank you. Um, so uh, I will start with the first question. Um, um, we um, have seen, we've, we've seen uh, the, the great tragedy of the explosion in the Beirut port last summer um, with 200 people dead and incredible damage. And that was supposed to be, um, uh, it's something that shocked everybody, right? Even people who don't follow Lebanon. And it was supposed to be a turning point um, for many people, like um, a watershed moment. Um, and um, aid has been promised to Lebanon, but um, politicians, international politicians are asking for reforms. Uh, now, with the US administration, uh, there hasn't been always um, an easy relationship. Um, and I wanted to ask you now that uh, the US has elected a new president, uh, Joe Biden. Uh, after this transition, uh, do you expect uh, changes? Do you expect uh, something different for Lebanon and for the region? And, there, and are there fears that in this transition, uh, things can get worse before they get better? Well, uh, first, thank you for uh, hosting me today. And uh, let me start with uh, the very bad explosion which happened in the port of Beirut on August 4th. Uh, this was really uh, a big tragedy and uh, uh, un, uh, unexpected one. And uh, it makes a lot of damage and lot, lots of victims and uh, destruction in, the res in a huge residential area. Uh, we are, uh, ex uh, frankly, uh, we are uh, expecting the judicial uh, court to uh, finish investigation and we are searching for uh, whoever is responsible behind this kind of uh, explosion and the tragic explosion to be ha to be transferred to justice uh, lebanese economy is in a very difficult situation and on top of that, we had this kind of uh, destruction. Uh, regarding the U.S. and new administration, if we can, uh, if we can just say one thing that the reforms should be uh, before the friendly countries ask for reforms. The Lebanese people is asking for reforms. The Lebanese people, and especially the young generation have uh, a very loud voice uh, since October 17, 2019, uh, requesting a changement in the whole political system of Lebanon, requesting an, uh, a progress in, in the way Lebanese government is acting and is working. I, uh, I can assure you that this kind of, uh, of uh, request is very clearly uh, heard by us, on l'a bien entendu. And uh, the Lebanese political uh, leaders are still uh, in a transition period of what used to be before and what it should be now and after. Uh, Lebanon is in a transitional uh, period of time, a very dangerous one, a very unprecedented one, and a very historic position. The United States of America is traditionally a close friend to Lebanon, uh, based on several uh, issues. Uh, human relations between Lebanon and the United States population are very long it is, since the 19th century. And uh, cultural uh, relations, uh, Lebanon is very well influenced by the US culture and uh, it, it doesn't, uh, we don't neglect the American University of Beirut, which was established by an American missionary 
who came in the 19th century. And it was, and it is still till now, one of the best universities in the Middle East. And of course, politically, Lebanon was co always considered as a pro-American uh, economic system, a pro-American political system, and a pro-American uh, and westernized society. Uh, we enjoyed a lot of, uh, of uh, friendly and uh, deep relations between the United States and Lebanon. What we face today is uh, a tough decision by the United States uh, administration regarding, uh, exactly regarding Iran. Iran is a Middle Eastern country. Iran is not an Arab country. Lebanon is a Middle Eastern country and Lebanon is an Arab country. Here is a struggle between how we can manage to keep our good relations and excellent relations with the United States and not break our relations with a friendly country called Iran. Iran is a very close friend to Lebanon. Saudi Arabia is a brother country to Lebanon. Arab states are brother states toward Lebanon and Lebanon is suffering today I will not compare it to some European countries during uh, 60 years ago or 70 years, but it have some uh, deep difficulties. And uh, in politics, we have to walk under the rain without being uh, wet by the water. So the United States is, is a very close friend. The United States is assisting the Lebanese army uh, since decades. The United States is uh, helping Lebanon through the United Nations and UNIFIL, Italy also. The United States is uh, playing now, since a few weeks, a major role in mediating our uh, indirect consultation with negotiations with Israel regarding our uh, water borders between Lebanon and Israel. And this is a very important uh, trust we have in the United States, and we, we trust the role of uh, equal, of neutral mediator, and knowing and having in mind how deep is the relation between Israel and the United States. So uh, based on the trust we have in the United States, we uh, accept uh, the mediation and the role of uh, uh, a neutral mediation, and it's still, four sessions of negotiations. We are expecting uh, more and more uh, discussion between Lebanon and Israel with the United States and UNA United Nations presence. So this is uh, the, the position we, uh, we feel actually. Whenever there is changement in the US administration, we don't expect a changement toward Lebanon. We expect some amelioration of the of the approach. Comment dit approach? Of the approach, the the U.S. administration under Trump presidency could be different and may be different than the U.S. approach under Biden presidency, uh, especially toward two things. The first one, which is the most essential, is the Israeli-Arab conflict and the Palestinian problem. The second one is how to deal with Iran, especially Iranian nuclear program, when President Trump pulled out the US from the agreement. And I hope that President Biden will revise and uh, make a new approach toward this uh, issue. It will make the Middle East more quiet. It will not put a, resol a solution to the problems, but resolving those solutions could be on a cold uh, table, not on a hot table. This is the difference. Thank you. Uh, shukran. Ahlan wa sahlan, Minister Wakbi. Lebanon is facing large. Shui, Lebanon is facing several crises now. But exactly for this reason, why um, 
Saad Hariri is still struggling to form a government one month after uh, it has been appointed to, for, for this. And just to follow up what you were saying regarding the United States and, and Iran, uh, some say that Lebanon will have uh, a government only when Biden will uh, engage in negotiation with Iran. What do you think about that? No, no. Uh, if you allow me first, thank you for asking this question. Uh, I cannot, uh, I cannot uh, think that this is a real uh, issue. Uh, uh, the relations between U.S. and Iran have nothing to do with the government formation in Lebanon. Uh, don't go too far. Uh, it's since one month Saad Hariri is trying to form a government. It should be fast enough, but certain countries where you have a difficult, uh, uh, difficult equilibrium between the, the society of this country, to take Belgium, for example, it took maybe more than two years without government. I am not claiming that Lebanon will have two years without government, but forming a government in a, 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 a constitutional system like Lebanese system, it is always based on consensus. The parliament is formed by, by several groups and several, I will, I will say it knowing that in Europe you are not uh, anymore talking about this issue based on religious uh, equilibrium. We still have in Lebanon, the Muslim side, the Christian side, the Shia, the Sunni, the Druze, the Maronite, the Orthodox, this is our, our, our nature, this is our society. And I hope that one day Lebanon will, will arrive to the level of uh, uh, Madani, uh, of, uh, of uh, secular, secular system like you have in, in Europe. Maybe it will be a big progress from our side. Inshallah. Inshallah. Um, Minister Wahbi, um, um, Another question uh, is about Europe's role, right? Um, European countries, you talked about the importance of uh, the United States, but uh, European countries want to help Lebanon's recovery. Uh, and yet they are saying, you first have to implement these reforms. Um, at the same time, um, uh, earlier I asked you about, um, you know, the transition period. Uh, you know, before the new administration. In this transition period, many things are happening. Um, and you just talked about Iran, there has been an attack in Iran. Everything that happens in the region, Lebanon is always brought in. So I'm wondering if, you know, when you are in such a position, um, I mean, how do you see first Europe's role? And second, uh, the solution of, um, problems like with Iran. Can it start from Iran or should it start from inside Lebanon, you know? Uh, I didn't catch your question about the solution from Iran. What do you mean by the solutions from Iran? Um, for instance, um, nowadays, uh, after Iran was attacked and their scientists was killed, right? Um, some people say that a response to Iran could come from Hezbollah, uh, sorry, response from Iran to, to its enemies could, could come from Hezbollah. So who said that? Who said that? Experts online and things like that. Look, look, uh, what's your name? Uh, Viviana. Yes. Viviana. Uh, I cannot really uh, put in my, I cannot accept or understand or, or uh, agree that. Uh, the reply from Iran, Iran is able to defend itself. This is a huge country, regional, a huge country. So let them defend themselves. I will not talk on Iran, on, on behalf of Iran. And Hezbollah is not, as some countries are saying, it could be playing a role on, uh, in Lebanon and regionally, but Hezbollah is also formed by Lebanese population, citizen. We are, we are trying all the best to keep Lebanon safe from inside. We don't want to break our unity, our social fabric, our, uh, our uh, 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 connection between Lebanese and Lebanese. We are several 
religions and several parties and every person or every group in Lebanon have in certain affinity, some orientation toward a regional or international uh, uh, side. So uh, Iran is able to defend itself and it will not be from Lebanon to defend Iran. This is not a role to be taken in consideration. Uh, we never talk about that and we never uh, think about that. Second, regarding the what's happening in the region, I can consider still now, till now Lebanon is in better situation than, than other regional uh, countries who are being destroyed and uh, attacked and uh, a civil war and uh, fight inside those countries. I don't want to name countries, but there is several Arab countries who have more difficult situation than Lebanon. We want to, to keep Lebanon on the, on the Middle East and on the European role. Our role is very important. Our role is a country where you can see this, uh, this uh, mosaic of, uh, of uh, sharing the power. Sharing the power between Christians and Muslims, you don't see it in any other country in the Middle East. There is Christians in Iraq. There is Christians in Egypt. There is Christians in Israel. There is Christians in Jordan, but they are not sharing the power. There is Muslims in Israel. There is Muslims in Jordan. There is Muslims in, uh, in Syria. They are not sharing the power. The power is completely uh, a partnership in Lebanon. And this is very beautiful and it's very difficult at the same time. To make a government in Lebanon with this, uh, with this culture, sometimes it's easy, but the majority, la plupart du temps, the majority of the time, it's very complicated and it takes time. But we will see the, the new government very soon, inshallah. Thank you. Uh, Minister Welby. Uh, yes. Uh, I never seen in my life uh, uh, such a will to, to, to help Lebanon. And as a personally, uh, since I'm happy because Lebanon is on my heart for my personal and professional reasons. Um, but uh, uh, the, the name of the game is uh, help us to help you. I mean, since if, if Lebanon doesn't make the reforms, uh, it's impossible to make to, to, to make the help that Lebanon needs. I give you an example, for instance. Um, the stumbling block is the, is the to reform is the Article 151 regarding the, the banking secrecy. Uh, with this, no forensic audit and of the central bank, of the Lebanese central bank. Uh, no audit, no CEDRES 11 billion uh, dollars of uh, aid package and no IMF um, uh, rescue. So how can we get out from this uh, cul-de-sac? Uh, I, I agree with you. Uh, the audit and, to, and especially the forensic audit is, uh, is a necessity and it is uh, primordial, it's, it's, it's our priority. The president of the Republic is making this issue one of his major target. target. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes uh, it doesn't succeed. He went to the parliament and he addressed a letter to the, to the parliament members and they adopted. And they said that it's not only the, the uh, le secret bancaire, the, the secret uh, of uh, the bank uh, secrecy, is only uh, not only for the central bank, for all ministers and for all government offices and uh, elected uh, entities like municipalities. And uh, so in Lebanon, it is a must to ameliorate, to change, to make a progress. And this is our responsibility. If it doesn't start today, it should start yesterday. It should start tomorrow. I believe in that. I agree with you totally. A changement is a must. We have to do something. And we are not asking for, for support and help to reconstruct and to, to build an economy of Lebanon if there is no uh, reforms and no l'impunité. Uh, uh, it should not be uh, uh, run away from the, from the punishment. The punishment should be applied. And we need really uh, a full 
capacity justice to uh, persecute and punish all responsible. There is no, 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 pas un plafond. There is no roof on top of anybody. Shukran. Um, uh, Minister Wahbi, uh, I am just looking at the um, uh, news wires regarding COVID-19 uh, COVID in Lebanon, and I saw that uh, the health ministry in Lebanon just said that the cases are rising and beds won't be enough. And um, so there is, uh, you know, and uh, you've had a two week lockdown that ended this week. Uh, can you tell us about the situation and what effects does it have uh, on the crisis that you described earlier? Uh, I am. Uh, I just came from the meeting of the ministerial uh, committee regarding uh, COVID-19. Uh, it is. It is a, a very uh, alarming issue. Uh, when we closed uh, the two weeks, uh, the the country, the the number of positive tests in the in the population was getting alarming, very high, and. Uh, the problem was not the number, which is high. The problem is that the capacity of our hospitals was 100% full. So we couldn't find one single bed, ICU bed for a, a, a COVID-19 uh, uh, disease. And at that case, it was mandatory to close the country and to, to tell the population that it is becoming very urgent we need to, to relieve a little the hospitals, the medical sector, and to increase the number of ICU beds and ventilators for COVID-19. Now, uh, starting last weekend, we had a, a new report that uh, we, there is now more than 100 ICU beds available. Can you imagine in the whole country where there is four or five million Lebanese and more than two million refugees, there is only 100 ICU bed, 100 in all Lebanon, not only in Beirut. And uh, we understand that the people cannot stay at home all the time because the government is not able to pay and to give them compensation. So uh, the pressure on the government is let the people work. They have to feed their families. They have to, uh, to gain some money, to earn money, to, to buy food. So we started since Monday a new uh, opening, uh, opening uh, uh, circulation and uh, working uh, time. I hope that the population will respect the only uh, obligation is to put the, the, the mask, this, this one. We, we ask them to put it even inside the car. When there is family members, they have to use it. They have to put it uh, all the time. And the, 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 the security policemen are now controlling the circulation if they are putting this, uh, this uh, medical mask on their face. Uh, COVID-19 is an issue. Uh, the capacity of our hospitals is becoming a little critical, but let's hope that uh, it, will, it will be easier for us before Christmas time and before the new year. After Christmas and the new year, we will make a new uh, assessment about how how big is the damage or how better is the improvement. I hope it will be improved, not damaged. Shukran, Minister. Um, uh, Lebanon needs dramatically to develop its uh, gas fields on the Mediterranean. Yes. But why uh, the encouraging maritime border negotiation with Israel has been stopped? It's just for a moment or...? No, uh, uh, your question is very important. Uh, it's not Lebanon who asked to stop these negotiations. It came from the United States and from Israel. We, they didn't ask to stop. They said to postpone it uh, for a limited period of time. We cannot say no, we agree. Okay, uh, they want it to be postponed one week, two weeks. I don't know for how long, but uh, yesterday the, the US negotiator, uh, the ambassador Du Rocher came, uh, he met the president and uh, the meeting was completely excellent. Uh, president of the Republic is always uh, looking 
uh, a very long strategic objectives. Uh, when, we, when we enter negotiations with our enemy, it's not like you enter negotiations with a neighbor country where you have relations. We are without relations with this country. So our, our negotiations are a little more delicate and it takes a little more time because we talk to the Americans and the UN. Israel talked to the Americans and the UN and they, trans, they uh, convey the, the messages to this side and to the other side. Uh, delineating the maritime border is, is a very, very important issue to us. And we are in the negotiations on a very serious and very uh, solid decision that Lebanon want to arrive. We are not maneuvering. It's not a maneuver. It is a strategic interest for Lebanon, for the East Mediterranean, and for Europe also to start exploring gas and oil from our uh, strategic and uh, uh, economic zone water. Uh, thank you, Minister. That, that our time is, uh, is running out, is all, it definitely is over. I want to thank conclude you. only with uh, your hope, or the hope you, you mentioned before, to see very soon a democratic Lebanon, not, not, not more sectarian as in the civil war or as in the, in the moment of critics. Uh, we understand that what happened, in, as uh, uh, many uh, Lebanese experts used to say, vous avez vécu une guerre pour les autres. You, you were fighting several times a guerre for ad, a war made by others. So hoping that Lebanon will, will, be, will reform itself, it, itself and will be happy again. This is our hope. Uh, Minister, thank you very much. Shukran. Thank you. Thank you. As you said, we, are, we paid the price of the other wars and we don't want to pay the price of other people who are uh, trying to do something else. Now we are taking in consideration our own interest and our own strategic uh, objectives and our population well-being. Thank you very much. Shukran. Shukran. Gracias.